Vai Listen, in amore spesso i cuori sanno musi Fick the silence, ma non sempre da un senso due sconosciuti Lui cerca di parlarci ma è difficile Lei si sente so stupid fra le virgole Di una lingua impossibile Ti piacciono evidente, yeah. divisi da una lingua differente Ma l'hai detto inglese che non entra in mente ma c'è un metodo che è conveniente Se di questo inglese tu non ci capisci niente È semplicissimo, è utilissimo Ti troverai benissimo, è comodissimo Evolution è la rivelazione Un nome, il tuo programma è la tua soluzione Amici, tu speak to me now Ho bisogno di parlarti It's so easy baby Please, I'll show you how It's so easy baby We'll be talking together and talking forevermore. Ti parlami, ti prego parlami. Speak now, tell me how I can be yours. In international English. 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 In Italia tanti persone credono che americano è un'altra lingua indipendente da inglese. It's not true. Um, c'è una specie di English, uh, anzi American English. Però uh, non pensare mai che è un'altra lingua perché loro hanno dei, dei slang, però non diverso da diverse uh, regioni di Inghilterra. Li Scouse, Liverpool. Uh, hanno tante parole loro, Newcastle, London, Birmingham, abbiamo tutti il nostro slang e l'America un, un, uh, è un'estensione di quello, o, però anche hanno delle modi uh, diversi di chiamare le cose, per esempio loro sempre usando inglese uh, scelgono parole diverse, per esempio boot, trunk, per esempio queste baule, uh, loro dicono trunk, noi diciamo boot, però trunk comunque è un contenitore. In inglese lift e elevator è la stessa cosa lift ascensore elevator in americano in americano in american english però elevator is something that elevates so it's still in english cioè non è una lingua separata anzi io faccio molto più fatica a capire un jody che sarebbe da newcastle inghilterra che un americano noi inglesi cresciamo con scooby doo e Sesame Street e tutte queste uh, trasmissioni e non avevamo mai problemi a capirli. Quindi non c'è da avere paura dicendo ah ok sto imparando inglese ma se vado negli Stati Uniti loro hanno certamente delle parole diverse, certamente delle variazioni di scrivere certe parole ma eh, non sono tanti. Per parlare di questa cosa qua adesso abbiamo una nostra grande amica e attrice Leah Dawson from America. Hi. Right, now Leah, we are going to have a look at some words. Uh, io dirò, anzi, uh, apparirà la parola, questa volta diversamente. Appare in italiano la parola e poi ti dico come si dice quella parola in inglese e poi lei lo dirà la stessa parola in American English, ok? Crisps. Chips. Ora, chips um, in inglese, in Inghilterra, eh, sono patatine fritte, mentre patatine fritte negli Stati Uniti le chiamano? Fries. French, is it fries or French fries? French fries, fries, freedom fries, depends on the day. Ah, oh, right, ok. Fries, fritte, però to fry in inglese è friggere, fried, fritto. Um, sweets. Candy. Candy. Sweets, uh, caramelle, giusto. Motorway. Highway. Toilet. Bathroom. Che per noi bathroom è il bagno, dove c'è però la vasca, uh, se le vivi in Italia anche il lavandino basso inutile. Is there, uh, do you have the bidet in America? No, no. None of us know how to use those. No, They're no, no, very no. complicated. Why? Why? Who needs them? Uh, now, just to, I'm going to translate. Allora, facciamo una cosa che non ho mai fatto nessuno. Traduco un accento, se vuoi. Lei adesso parlerà di Elisabetta prima, perché tra poco c'è il sketch con Elizabeth I. 
è tutto quello che dice lei io traduco lei in American English and I'll do English English John has been teaching me about British history John has been teaching me about British history and there was once a queen named Elizabeth and there was once a queen named Elizabeth in the United States we don't have queens like the royal family queens we have different kinds of queens in the United States we have we don't have queens like the royal family queens we have queens but a different kind of queen completely so this Queen Elizabeth ruled during the end of the Renaissance so this Queen Elizabeth ruled at the end of the Renaissance and she was a very strong woman and she was a very strong woman a lot like Margaret Thatcher was a very strong political woman too a lot like She's improvising. È importante sapere che lei sta improvvisando e non ho scritto io, okay? <laughs> okay. A lot like, sorry, can you repeat the phrase? A lot like Margaret Thatcher was also a very strong woman. A lot like Margaret Thatcher was a very strong fascist uh, woman. But the problem with Queen Elizabeth the first. But the problem with Queen Elizabeth the first. Is that no one liked her. Is that nobody, is, is that no one liked her. So, it was a bit of a concern when she was going to have a birthday party. So, it was a bit of a concern when she was going to have a birthday party. Fino adesso, vedete, è uguale. So, for anyone, it's difficult if it's your birthday and no one comes to your party. So, for anyone, it's difficult if it's your birthday and nobody comes to, your part, to your party. And that's the sketch. And now there's going to be a sketch all about Queen Elizabeth I's birthday. Hai usato Genetio Sasso adesso o no? Did you use the jack? How did you say? I said, and now there's going to be a sketch about Queen Elizabeth's birthday. Okay. So now there's going to be a sketch about Queen Elizabeth's birthday. Thank you, Leah. You're welcome. You're welcome. What, a, what am I going to do? About what? I don't understand the problem. Well, it's the Queen's private birthday. I sent out all the invitations and nobody has come. Well, of course nobody has come. She's the most hated woman in the world. <laughs> but she doesn't know that. She doesn't know that. No. She's attacked. Every territory on the modern map. The modern map? What do you mean? It's 1570. How could it be a modern map? Well, it's modern now, isn't it? Oh, yes, of course. Um, now, uh, uh, going back to the original question, what am I going to do? Well, uh, I can only really see one solution here. That being? You're going to have to be the guests. What? You're going to have to pretend, right? You will have to pretend to be the guests <laughs> from all different countries, <laughs> several times. Well, okay, but will you help me, please? Oh. Right, I'm ready to receive my guests. Your so Majesty, I happy birthday, of course, looking lovely and splendid as uh, always, and I have a nice... <laughs> Uh, surprise for you. Uh, oh, look, it's the, the King of Germany with a, with a, with a present. Mm, Your Majesty, I would like to wish you a very happy birthday from Germany. <laughs> Thank you, Ludwig. But you seem very short. <laughs> Didn't you used to be a bit taller? Yes, I am not wearing my 
high heels today <laughs> out of a sign of respect, Your Majesty. <laughs> anyway, I would just like to say that Germany is your friend. And I hope that we will have many successful years together as allies. And I hope for everlasting peace between our two great countries. <laughs> I agree, Ludwig. Thank you very much. Now your you Majesty. may leave. Thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> oh, look. A vase. Yeah. Uh, it's just like the one I've got in the kitchen. What a coincidence. Thank you. Everlasting piss. That sounds really painful. <laughs> oh, look. It's a man on a horse. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not coming here for your birthday. It's not. Oh, yes, it is. It's only the governor of America. Hey, hey, hey. hey pretty lady. Oh, you. I've come <laughs> all the way from the other side of the Atlantic to wish you one hell of a happy birthday, lady. The most beautiful dame I know. And I have brought you this, honey. <laughs> also, I'd like to say in the name of the colonies that we are your friends and we have a very special relationship. And I hope that we have many years of successful alliances together in the future. I hope for everlasting peace between our two great nations. <laughs> Yee-haw! I'll be seeing you, honey. <laughs> A hairbrush. Just like the one I have in the bathroom. What a coincidence. Oh, look. It's him. It's the one who comes from that place with the big volcano. It's a guaglione. You know, one of those guys. He's getting out of a gondola now and he's kissing all the girls love him you know who that is it's the king of naples <laughs> Ciao, <Bella. laughs> have you brought me some buffalo or some salami <laughs> well have you no no i bring you a poem i read oh. uh, it goes, a queen, the most beautiful human being I ever seen. You know what I mean, queen. <laughs> oh yeah, why you? <sighs> also, I'd like to say, in the name of Napoli. That we are your friends. And I hope that we have many successful years together as allies. And I hope for everlasting peace between our two great countries. For now, it's all. Ciao. <laughs> This is the best birthday party I ever had. Well, I'm glad your birthday is only once a year. All these people bring in everlasting piss. Oh. <laughs> oh, look. He's still alive. The King of Scotland. <laughs> How you doing, Queenie? All right? I'm ecstatic, King <laughs> Jock. <laughs> Good. I just brought you a wee present for your birthday I have. Oh, really? I hope you like it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just like to say that my kilt has fallen down a wee bit there, but don't take any notice of that. I'd just like to say, on behalf of Bonnie Scotland, that we are real friends. You know that? And I'd also like to say that I'm looking forward to years and years as successful allies. <laughs> All right. And I hope that we will have everlasting peace between our two countries forever. I doubt that, but thanks anyway. 
<laughs> I doubt that too, actually, if the truth be told. <sighs> anyway. Okay, Queenie, I'll be seeing you shortly, all right? Okay. Hi. Uh, Fare the well now. <laughs> a spoon? You know, actually, that's quite a lot for a Scot. Yeah, he'll want it back in a minute, you'll see. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, no. I mean, look, look. Look, who's that? <laughs> Um, oh, look at her. She's so beautiful. You know who that is, don't you? It's the Queen. It's, the, it's Agnes, the Queen of the Irish. A <laughs> top of the morning to ye, Your Majesty. How you doing? You're a very fine figure there, I must say. <laughs> no, a happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you, Agnes. Where's my present? I, your Majesty, I actually forgot the present this morning, but I am your present. I'm your present. I'm going to do a little jig for you, if that's all right. Oh, God, how about that? How do you like that? You, you've grown that another a, leg. Another leg? Oh, what do you mean? Didn't you lose a leg in a riding accident? Oh, I don't think so. Let's have a look at that one. It was oh. the other leg. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, anyway. Anyway, uh, I'd just like to say, on behalf of the Irish people, that we are your friends. And I'm looking forward to having successful years of allydom with you. And, uh, well, I wish for everlasting peace between our two great countries. Uh, if that's all right, now I've got to go. I've got to take a trip back to Dublin. All right, I'll be seeing you later. Cheers! Oh, wait. Uh, stop, stop! Come back. Where's my present? Walter, did you notice something different about Agnes just now? Who? Oh, Ag yes, Agnes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bit different, wasn't she? She, uh, she seemed a little darker than usual. Has she been on holiday? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. She usually goes to Great Yarmouth. I saw her uh, with. Never mind, Agnes. This lady is. Ri no, hang on. It's not a lady. What an honour. If you ever thought you weren't loved, look who's come to see you. All the way from India, the King of India! <laughs> what a marvellous sight, Your Majesty! I've dreamed about this moment for many, many years. Really? Yes. Mom, I have not bought you a birthday present. But I want you to remember that in India today, there are 500 million Indians throwing their hats into the air and celebrating your birthday. And I would also like to add that we are your friend, madam. And I look forward to many, many years of successful alliances between our countries. And I hope for everlasting peace between our two. Great God. Good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, could you just uh, wait a moment because uh, William Shakespeare would like to meet you. Uh, Shaky! Uh, madam, I'd just like to say that I'm meeting Shakespeare down the pub in five minutes. I think I go there now. No, you're not. Stop. No. Uh, uh, come here. No. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Oh, my double chocolate birthday cake. <laughs> Gods! <laughs> Please, Your Majesty. I did it for you. Nobody came, so I pretended to be the guests because I didn't want you to feel hurt, Your Majesty. Oh. We are here, Your Majesty. Oh, send the guards away. So you organized all this to protect my feelings. Oh, oh thank you, Shaggy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Guards. Go to your commander and tell him that England declares war on all those countries 
of the people who ignored my birthday invitation. <laughs> <sighs> and let the Navy sail tomorrow, and one by one we will conquer our enemies, and England will be great again, and we will colonize the world. Yeah! <laughs> Majesty, uh, may I go now? <laughs> yes. Altri differenze between uh, American English and uh, like British. English, English. Funny, allora, funny non vuol dire buffo, uh, quello è fu, fu, funny. E state attenti perché in Inghilterra se tu, tu dici funny vuol dire c'è in Italia della femmina. Mentre in America, what's funny? It's just your butt. Your butt, che è un altro modo di dire funny, che vuol dire il tuo sedere. Meglio se uno è, è buffo in Inghilterra fare il suo così. <laughs> non rischiare, perché o lo dici che è genitalia di donna o lo dici sedere. In ogni modo uh, è rischioso, direi. Poi un altro da stare attento, uh, i mutandi uh, per uomo sono pants. In England, pants. Pants, però, in America... They're pantaloni. Pantaloni, yeah. They are pants, trousers, which in English are trousers. Um, when we were kids, bambini, we loved pop, le bibite. And we drank a lot of soda. Soda, which is the same, uh, which is the same thing. Ora, io uh, vorrei ancora fare un mini intervista a Lea per vedere un attimo, far sentire le differenze tra cosiddetto American English and British English. All right, so. Totalmente improvvisato, eh? niente scritto, niente copione. Um, tell us about you. Tell you about me. Well, I was born in Indiana and I grew up in Kansas. Well, I was born in Indiana and I grew up in Kansas. And I went to university in Colorado and New Mexico. And that, that was a big university. Yeah, both universities are big. And I went to university in... Colorado. Colorado. And New Mexico. And New Mexico. Where the Kennedys went to school. So. Where the Kennedys went to school. One of them, medical school, actually. One of them, in medical school, actually. Yeah. So after that, I decided to become an elementary school teacher. So after that, I decided to become a junior school. Very Lee, elementary, junior. Sono parole inglese, scegliamo però, scegliamo diversi modi di dire. So I decided to become a junior school teacher, or primary school teacher. Primary school, yeah, primary school. So I began teaching and it's the best job in the universe. Uh, so I began teaching and it's the best job in the universe. It is. Then I moved to Florida where I taught more elementary school. And then I went to Florida where I taught more primary school. Then I moved to Milan, where I taught more elementary school. Then I went to Milan, where I taught more primary school. And it's a wonderful life. I'm a very happy what person. What do you think about Italian people? I like Italian people. I like Italian people. Why? They are friendly. They are kind. They have curly hair like I do. And they make great food. Do I have to say that? <laughs> Okay, repeat. Put me on the spot. <laughs> Sorry. Say. The Italian people are warm. Italian people are warm. They're kind. They're kind. They have curly hair like me. They have curly hair like me. And they have a lot of fun. And they have a lot of fun. Si divertono, questo è vero. I agree. Tell me what you don't like about Italy. Cosa non ti piace dell'Italia? Uh, niente. Ruffian. Ruffian. Anzi, learning Italian. Sai che Ruffian è, 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 è birichino, monello, non è ruffiano. No, learning Italian Ruffiano si dice creep. 
Sorry. The most difficult thing, the thing I find difficult, is learning Italian. The thing I most find difficult is learning Italian. But that wasn't my question, though. Oh. You have to find a fault. Devi trovare un difetto okay. con gli italiani. Okay. Sappiamo che sono divertentissimi, bellissimi, right. artistici, creativi. Find something wrong. I don't like it when I try really hard to speak Italian. Stop! I don't like it when I try really hard to speak Italian. And I get the look. And I get the look. Che vuol dire che mi guardano male. Loro accusano noi di questo. They say that we English are like... They complain, lamentano loro di noi perché dicono che eh, se non parli perfettamente inglese, bla bla bla. Quindi tu mi stai dicendo che loro lo fanno anche... anche. Mm. Notice though that was the English they complain about. Mm -hmm. The news. This is Evolution News with Francesca Tibaldi and John Brown. Good evening. More and more Italians are saying that they find English hard to understand in certain English international accents. German and American accents are especially very difficult, they say. Our Indian correspondent Asha had this to say. Namaste. Yes, today I spoke with a few people about this, who agree that accents can sometimes be very difficult for some Italians, especially German, American people. At the end of the day, jo John, these American and German should also make an effort to be understood. What did she say? Um, I don't know, but I think that was important. Listen, a lot of the time it's not the Italian that is to blame, it's the speaker. Um, unfortunately, many English, American and German speakers do not slow down. They do not take into consideration that Italians don't know some difficult words. You have to remember though that English, these people usually are not teachers, so they don't know what a phrasal verb is or, a, or, a, or a, you know, some of the verbs that you don't know. But it's the responsibility of the Italian to ask the, the speaker to slow down. If you don't ask them to slow down, they think you understand and so they just go very, very quickly. So then you're to blame too. Just stop them and ask them to speak slowly. And then, you know, uh, there won't be any problem. They will help you. If you don't, then it will just get worse. Immacolata Della Croce from Languages Across the World has written a book regarding this matter. The book is called Speak clearly. Immacolata, could you please explain to us your views? Yes, um, secondo me a gente non ci pensa. Tu hai sempre pensato con chi stai parlando e cercare di usare termini più facile, più semplici e parlare con inglese per um, chiaro. A lingua serve per parlare, sì, uno non ti capisce, ma tu che parla fa, eh, che ha già fatto. I totally agree. Totally agree. The weather, please. Is he still angry? John, please, call him now. <sighs> Risponde la segreteria telefonica di quello che faceva the weather. Sono momentaneamente assente e comunque in Inghilterra piove. Puoi mettere giù il telefono, John. Metti giù. Ho detto metti giù! Bravo! Good night. I'm here now with... Katia, perché vogliamo vedere un attimo, siccome adesso tantissime persone hanno da fare con persone da India, uh, lei è di Pakistan, che una volta, se non sbaglio, era tutto lo stesso paese una volta, no? Vero? Una volta sì. Mm. Però l'accento è uguale o simile? No, in India noi abbiamo circa 360 accenti diversi, lingue diverse direi, in Pakistan invece abbiamo Urdu Punjabi. 
360 cieli, come in Italia, è più sì. o meno così. Sì, hanno tutti accenti in linguaggi diversi. Però facciamo un accento solo, <ride> per adesso, per uh, to encompass uh, India e Pakistan. Ora, spieghi per favore, uh, quando, uh, parli, uh, in, uh, quando parlo inglese, una, una persona da India, cosa, cosa devi capire? Quali sono le differenze principali? dell'accento. Ok, I explained to you in English how we talk from India. We like to say always, ok? We always like to say ok, because like that you know people are understanding you, no? Can we do that again and I'll kind of like, like I did with Leah, I'll translate the accent, ok? Just ah, stop okay. sometimes and I'll translate it. Ok. Di nuovo? Well, from India we always like to say ok? Ok. Well, From India, lei dice well, but col V, come fanno i tedeschi. So, well, from India, we always like to say... Okay. Okay. The reason we like to say okay... Uh, the reason... Come here, little, the reason. We like to say... No, the reason. The reason. The reason. Okay, sorry, sorry, I'm just trying, I'm trying. Uh, the reason... We like to say okay... We like to say okay. It's because like that we know you understand us, no? Uh, because like that we know you understand us, no? Like that. Okay, listen. Cosa stai facendo però? Che loro devono sapere bene. Nel senso, uh, cosa stai facendo diverso da noi inglese? Che può mettere dei problemi in italiano? Well, when okay, we... Okay, for example, well. Well, you said well. We always use the V instead of the W. Okay, poi uh, usiamo, we always use the V, V instead of the W, invece W. Altri esempi? No. Yes, when, I, when we say to each other, oh, please uh, put on the video. <laughs> we don't say put on video, we say put on the video because everybody know what video is. And video? And, and, now this is interesting. Quindi loro invece di w dicono v, well instead of well, ma quando c'è invece il v non lo dicono, dicono com'è video? Video. Video. Non, non, avete, non avete sparato. It's like when we say Please um, clean the, the windows. Windows. Ma anche gli italiani dicono window. Io ho sentito anche window una volta. Oh, no, we say windows. <laughs> And you know, sometimes we have problem when we talk Italian because they don't really understand, they don't try to understand what we are saying, no? We have problems with Italians sometimes because they don't try to understand. Lei sta dicendo le stesse cose, io sto dicendo le stesse cose che sta dicendo lei, è interessante però. Facciamo um, delle parole, vediamo le pronunce diverso uh, indiano e inglese. Allora, repeat what I'm saying with accent, ok? So, uh, my name is John. My name is John. Ok, quasi uguale. Uh, I'm going to call you tomorrow. I call you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Vedi? It's, the, it's, it's to, tomorrow. It is Quale tomorrow. Quale è No, it is Indian. Tomorrow. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, no, I, no, because I can't find the, the real difference. Cioè, io capisco, cioè, dicono tanti che hanno problemi, ma non perché. A me mi, Marco, ti sembra chiaro quello che sta dicendo? O oh, no? Era più difficile Lea dell'America, mi sembra. But you see, when we talk to each other, no? We try to explain very much um, in detail what we are saying to each other, but sometimes... In detail? In some But time, we, are, uh, see, no, we take the see. bus and we go places and we talk to people and they don't understand what we are saying. If I say to you, I want to catch bus. Laura, you know, why catch detto bus? Bene bus? Hai visto che non hai detto bus? And then they say, you mean autobus? I mean bus. <laughs> oh, can I just say, uh, infine. Um, mi piace molto, è molto bello questa cosa rossa. Oh, and vedi questo, ma che ci sta a provare, Fio? Non 
sembrava indiano. Hi, Jake. Hi, Sam. So, I've got some good news and some bad news. Ah, OK. So, uh... Jake, nobody in England wants you. <laughs> it's a small island. There aren't enough <laughs> women to go around, are there, really? There are 26 million, of which 3,000 are on our database. And, uh... None of them want me? No. <laughs> well, what have you been telling them? Nothing. I just sent them your profile. Well, did you put my photograph up as well? I did. Look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> so, um, well, what's the good news? Well, we have a new international service and there are a lot of women abroad who want to meet you. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, how does it work? Well, you'll be connected by phone to the girls interested in you all around the world. Uh-huh. And if the conversation goes well, you can move on to the next step. Oh, what's the next step? Marriage. What? Two minutes on the telephone and then marriage? Yep. Wow. OK, your first candidate is... Shenaz from Pakistan. Hello, Shenaz. Jack? Hello, Shenaz. Cool. Jack, I saw a picture on the computer screen. As soon as I saw your wonderful, sweet smile, I prayed to God you could be mine. <laughs> so, uh, well, darling, what, what, what do you do for your man? I would love to cook and clean for my man. I believe that a woman should treat her man like a king. So, like, if I'm watching the football, would you bring me a beer while I'm doing that, or...? Jack, I would bring you two beers, brewed by myself in our garden of hops. <laughs> Just one thing, Shanaz. Um, it strikes me that you're just a bit younger than me, eh? I know you are older, but this means you are wiser. And I want to listen to you. I can't wait for you when you are drunk, so I can hear about all your adventures in the pub. Shanaz, will you marry me? No. Shanaz! Not yet. You have to give the other girls a chance first. Now we have Diamond from Texas. Hello, Diamond. Hi, Jake. Why, you are a fine man, baby. I didn't believe a lady when she said you were free. Hi, Diamond. Yeah, I know it seems so unlikely, but it's true. Oh. What do you do for your man, Diamond? What don't I do? When he wakes up in the morning, I make sure he's got a nice, hot breakfast. Then... I run him a nice hot bath and I wash his back and sing him some old country music songs. Then, just before I go to work... Before you go to work? Hey, baby, I don't want my man getting tired. I want you to stay at home and watch TV while I go painting those pretty little houses for the school council. Oh, Diamond, you are my woman. I want to marry you! Oh, Jake! Ingrid from Germany. Hello? Jake? Yes? I think you will love me, Jake. Why? Well, because I am a funny. No, you're not. You're German. <laughs> okay, you're right. But I make good cakes. Really? Oh, yes. Just like your mommy used to make. Right. And I love to listen to men moan about how great they are, but never had a chance. Do you? Right. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, you know, I am a great man. <laughs> I know, baby. But I, I just never had a chance. I know, I know. It's so unfair. I know, I know.
no. People can always bringing you down because they are jealous of your grass. That's right, Ingrid. That's spot on. That's exactly what I mean. You seem to understand me so well, Ingrid. Like nobody else in the world, Jake. Will you marry me, Ingrid? Okay, time's up. So, who do you want, Jake? Well, you know, that that's quite a hard decision to make because, I mean, all of them were very nice in their own way. They were. Mm. But I have to say one thing. The one I really wanted uh, wasn't there. No. Who's that? Think about it. I don't know what John was going on about tonight. He's just talking and talking and accents and I don't know what he wanted. I, I know it wasn't real clear what he was looking for, but maybe, Katya, maybe he's using this as an excuse to find women. He did say to me tonight, I look really lovely in this red scarf. He didn't tell me I look cute. Well, I wouldn't worry if I was you because I think the reason I am here is because I'm going to meet Silky Steve. Oh, Silky Steve? Know him? Well, we've met. No. Yeah. On the beach, we had drinks, the sun. Oh, it was wonderful. A good time with Silky Steve. You didn't really meet him? No, it was a dream. Oh. But it was silky. It was a great dream, best dream. I every time think of him, I get very happy. Silky Steve. Yeah, it's the man. Ladies and gentlemen, at four o'clock, this afternoon, I met the woman of my dreams. And at five o'clock, she left me. Yeah. Because, you see, by amazing, an amazing coincidence, the barman was the man of her dreams. So, very unlucky. She was from Jamaica, this, uh, this lady. You know, in Italy, they say that the world is a single country. It's not. It's not. I'm here to tell you that it's not. Women are different. And now I'm going to sing you a guide to the world's women. I know what you're thinking. You are thinking, what would he know about women from all around the world? How would he know what all these different women are like? Well, I do know what many different women are like because you know what? I read a lot. So this song is dedicated to all the women around the world and it's called I'm from the planet love. Learn from this, okay? Girls who come from Italy Squeeze the blackheads on your nose Girls who come from Holland Pick you up and take you home Girls who come from Paris Only talk about food And girls who come from Birmingham Are always in the mood Girls who come from Ipanema are in a different song. Girls who come from Sweden are unbelievably blonde. Girls who come from Brazil only want to dance. 
Girls who come from Latvia just want to have a chance. But all I want is you. Oh, all I want is you. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you've done. I want you. I want you. I want you. Doesn't matter. Oh, what you've done, I want you. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter where you're from. I want you. What is that? Perché vuoi che moriamo così giovani? Non possiamo guidare qui, non vedi che guidano dalla parte sbagliata? Ma va là che ci abituiamo dopo 5 minuti. Can I help you? Uh, yes, help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Help. We'd like to hire a car. Right, well, that's what I'm here for, so how long? Uh, for two days. Small or large? Automatic or manual? Two seats or four or five? <laughs> Small, manual, two-seater, please. And uh, how much is it? Uh, well, I have a very, very nice Mini. It's only uh, 40 pounds a day. I think uh, it's perfect. Mm. Have you got anything cheaper? Skateboard. <laughs> okay. Uh, is the insurance included in the price? Yes, it is, madam. Okay. And can I see the car? It's here, look. <gasps> and it's all yours. 40 pounds per day. Wow! I don't go with them. <laughs> hey, where is the logbook? It's under the passenger seat. And the indicators? On the sides of the steering wheel. Okay. Is it petrol or diesel? Petrol. Unleaded. Does she always ask so many questions? <laughs> always. <sighs> Sorry, it's company policy. We do not allow Italians to use cars with horns. Dai. We have to disconnect them, sorry. Only for Italians. Okay, how do I turn on the engine? Turn the key. So, tell me. Does the insurance cover a crash? Can't you help my hand today for the first time in months? Why? Because she's terrified of flying. She took my hand at takeoff and didn't let go until we landed in London. She even accompanied me to the toilet, which was fun. 
We arrived in London at 10 in the morning. Our bags, however, didn't. My bag with the pasta and cheese for my mother went to India. Conchi's bag of clothes went to Cairo. The great thing was that when our bags didn't appear, the first thing Conchi did was call her mother. I had to wait until she reported everything to her mother before going to report the missing bags to the authorities. The conversation went like this. Yes, mom, our bags didn't arrive. Can you believe it? What? The food on the plane? Well, it was terrible, obviously. The plane was English, mom. My mother came to pick us up 20 minutes late. When we told her about the missing bags, she was devastated. Oh no, my cheese, my wine. In the car, Conchi asked the question most Italians ask when in a car in England for the first time. Why do you drive on the right side of the road? I couldn't resist. Because if I drive on the left, I'll go directly into that car there and kill us all. It is a long drive from London to my home city of Birmingham. So we stopped in Watford, North London, for something to eat. Conchi couldn't wait to complain about the food. I think Italians feel it is their duty to complain about the food in other countries. It's a national requirement. I think there is something in the Italian constitution that says that if you don't complain about the food in other countries, then your passport will be confiscated. We stopped at a service station. What would you like to eat? I asked. Surprise me, Conchi replied. I ordered two steak and kidney pies. Our food was ready in minutes. That was too fast, Conchi said. Why all these sauces, she added with a suspicious look on her face. There must be something seriously wrong with the food if they need all these sauces. What are they trying to hide? Just eat, I said. Conchi took a bite and then I saw something I have never seen before in my life. Her face contorted. Her lower teeth protruded up out of her mouth. She had the same mouth as a bulldog. Then her skin was momentarily green. Now she looked like a green bulldog from hell. Then she made a low manly sound, like that girl in the film The Exorcist. Kirschkiefer, she moaned. Now I could see tears in her doggy eyes. What is it? She asked. Steak and kidney pie, I told her. Meat and kidneys in yeast and blood. Conchi ran. I didn't see her for a few minutes, then she returned. Is all the food like this? She asked. Because if it is all like this, I'm going home now. Ah, oh, horrible. Listen, in amore spesso cuore sono musi. The silence. Ma non sempre da un senso due sconosciuti. No. Ma c'è un metodo che è conveniente. Se di questo inglese tu non ci capisci niente. È semplicissimo, è utilissimo. Ti troverai benissimo, è comodissimo. Evolution è la rivelazione. Un nome, il tuo programma è la tua soluzione. Amici. Speak 